and Europe has not yet learned how to be multicultural. And I think we're going to be part of the throes of that of that transformation, which must take place. Europe is not going to be the monolithic uh, uh, societies that they once were in the last century. Jews are going to be at the center of that. It's a huge transformation for Europe to make. They are now going into a multicultural mode, and Jews will be resented because of our leading role. But without that leading role and without that transformation, Europe will not survive. Isn't that what is really happening today, both in Europe and perhaps in other parts of the world, this very intense clash between ostensibly secular and ostensibly religious worldviews? Yes, this is what, exactly what is happening. There is a clash of civilizations. And uh, we, the Jews, we are in the middle of this clash of civilization. On one side is what happened in Paris and Brussels, and uh, is, uh, uh, that children who walk with the kippah in the streets in Paris are being attacked. On the other side, what we have, we have the counteraction of old Europe. We have the laws against uh, limiting religious freedom in Switzerland against the minorites, mm -hmm. in France against the burqa, mm -hmm. uh, the attempted law in Germany against circumcision, the attempted law in Holland and in Poland against uh, halal or kosher meat. So this is the reaction of, uh, of old Europe against uh, this new wave of religious expression. So essentially what you're saying is that in these both you're together with uh, both Muslims uh, yes, yes, yes. and people of other And, and, and uh, we see ourselves together, uh, fighting together with uh, our Muslim brothers who are, who want a free Europe, who want a peaceful Europe, who want to uh, integrate like our forefathers integrated in Western Europe 120 years ago. And they are our natural allies. So how many people in Europe would be eligible under the law of return to move here? Three million, four million maybe altogether. It could change the geopolitics. What do you mean that it could change the geopolitics? You know, it's the, the demography is the key of everything, as you know. Between the Jordan and the Mediterranean, this is the borders. Ten million people, about half million Jews and half million Arabs. And if we want to remain a democratic state, we have to have a majority of Jews in this place. So but you think a, you think that immigrants could could turn the balance? Absolutely sure. Already, we have the birth rate among Arabs is decreasing, and the birth rate among Jews is increasing. So it's already a change. The train of history is on its way. <laughs> والتمانين بعد عشر سنين يراسهم ستين والستين يراسهم كام أربعين والأربعين بعد عشر سنين عشرة بعد عشرين سنة مش حبوا في حد Since then, an unholy alliance of leftists, capitalists and Zionist supremacists has schemed to promote immigration and miscegenation with the deliberate aim of breeding us out of existence in our own homelands. First, their immigrant pawns were temporary guest workers. Then it was a multiracial experiment. Then they were refugees. Then the answer to a shrinking population. Different excuses, different lies. But the real aim stays the same. The biggest genocide in human history. Really ashamed of the racist and xenophobic uh, terms. Is your policy serious or is, are you just shouting? Mr. Griffin. It's you that's shouting because obviously the truth hurts. I have a constructive suggestion to help those poor asylum seekers from Africa. Yes, make it clear they can't come here so they don't try to cross the sea and drown in huge numbers. The best way for them is to get the banks off the backs of their countries so they can live in peace in their countries and we Europeans can live in peace in ours. Thank you.